Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Hot News! The internet's only reliable source of unreliably reliable information about tech news. I am your host, Brett Sticklemonster. We have a couple of housekeeping items to run through today before we get into the actual news, so please bear with me. As you know, we had to fire Reese yesterday because of his incompetence and laziness regarding the jingle, and with that, I'm swamped under work. So we're actually looking for a writer and video editor to help us out with the hot news series. If you're knowledgeable about tech, specifically computer hardware, and have gooder English skills than myself, and have competence to write gooder than me too, then send your resume and a sample hot news piece to UFD Hot News at Jamal. Com. Also, if you can edit videos gooder than me too, please send an email as well with a sample reel. We need all the help we can get here at UFD Tech, especially with the dearth of talent that Reese left us with. So if you're interested and have the skills, drop an email to UFDHotNews at Jamal.com. And with that out of the way, let's embark on this treacherous quest. We have a bit of GPU news for you today, but don't worry, nothing about the 11 series or anything upcoming, nothing rumor, real stuff that's here and now. EVGA has announced their GTX 1053 gig GPUs that they're now available. Coming in both the standard gaming and super clock versions, these monstrous of amalgamated parts can now be yours. You get the core performance of a 1050 Ti with the crippling memory issues of a GT 1030. Match made in heaven. And Gigabyte has said that their GPU shipments are down quite a bit in the second quarter of 2018. Due to slowed down crypto demand, the company only shipped around 1 million units in Q2, while they sold 1.2 million units in Q1. While that doesn't sound like a massive delta right there, the difference between around 1 million units and 1.2 milli can actually potentially equate for those 300,000 GPUs that Nvidia had to take back. Obviously, I'm not saying that it was Gigabyte who had to return those GPUs, but if you play loose with a what around 1 million units means, then there could be a decrease of 300,000 GPUs in Gigabyte sales. Gigabyte has said that they intend to focus more on promoting GPUs for gamers instead of the higher margin miners since the demand is so weak right now. So yes, my friends, they're publicly admitting it now, even though they wouldn't back then, they highly preferred miners, regardless of gamers being their core loyal customers or not. They just didn't care. It was about the money. So speaking of bad GPU sales, Crash Bandicoot's remaster is coming to the PC and we finally have the requirements that you will need to run it. The minimum you'll need to jam this game will be a stupendously blazing Core i5 750 or a Phenom 2 X4 965 for your CPU and then for your graphics cards for you to render the rascally bandicoot in real time you'll need a GTX 660 or an HD 7850. I know, I know. You're really gonna have to dig into your pockets to make sure that you have a system fully capable of running this surprisingly well done nostalgia marsupial. Thankfully, to counteract that stack of Benjamins you'll have to drop on Crash Bandicoot, we have indication that SSDs could go down in price, should go down in price rather. DRAM Exchange is reporting that the demand for NAND flash is expected to fall in the second half of this year. If you combine that with the better production yields of 3D NAND, then we have the perfect recipe for having prices go down. Some more system storage can actually be a likely upgrade for you when the new GPUs drop in a few months and you're redoing your entire system. The report does indicate that things such as the sales of the new iPhone or environmental disasters could change the pricing forecast, but at this point they're expecting it to be a downward trend for the rest of the year. Also, the Galaxy Note 9 event is officially scheduled for August 9th of this year, August, because we all need a giant stylus wielding phone. Is it time for the annual exploding phones joke? Is that what this is? And then apparently Microsoft has updated their Edge browser on Android to have a built-in content ad blocker. Honestly, this is probably one of the times where I'm excited about Microsoft Edge doing something forward thinking. But then I remembered that they're mostly going to be blocking Google ads everywhere and it's probably just a giant snarky gesture to pull some revenue from Chrome and Google and hopefully make Edge and Bing relevant. Stop trying to be cool, Microsoft. Bing will never be a thing. Elgato Gaming, the company that's best known for their capture cards, was recently acquired by Corsair. That's forced the home automation portion of Elgato, yes, that existed, to rebrand as EVE Systems. It's great to see Corsair having more gaming-focused products in their lineup, and we even have an official first look at the RGB capture card that they're prototyping. At this point, I'm hoping Apple partners with Corsair so that MacBooks can start to look even better. We need that, that half-eaten fruit to grow glow RGB, my friends. It needs to grow up. And once you're done with hot news today, I want you to take 10 minutes out of your day and watch this video by The Thought Emporium. 
spectrum. They built a camera that can see Wi-Fi signals and provide all of the schematics for you to build one yourself. This is an incredibly useful thing for spying on your neighbors to find out where the Wi-Fi dead zones are so that you can see who's mooching off your network. Yeah, Chad, I know you WPS connected to my router when we had you over for dinner. I can see that you don't even have internet at home anymore. Get off my network. And speaking of being on someone else's network, it's time for today's segment of, wait, did the government really just do that? We have two parts in today's segment in order of increasing what the crappery. The US Justice Department just gave Disney the go ahead to, for buying Fox. This clearing the major hurdle of antitrust claims against the merger. The Justice Department required that Disney give up Fox's regional sports channels because then there would be a monopoly on sports watching due to Disney already owning ESPN. Apparently already owning all of the Disney princesses, Star Wars, the MCU, and then expanding into all of Fox's Marvel assets wasn't considered a problem. I'm pretty sure I could go into Disney and Illuminati conspiracy theories here, but I'll, I'll refrain. Now, this next story, I actually want your opinion on. Civil opinion, let's keep those comments healthy down there. So, Homeland Security Investigations ran an online money laundering business specializing in working with drug deals on the dark web over the past year. From the operations of the site, where they would transact in Bitcoin to help clean the money of narcotics dealers, the HSI trap resulted in prosecutions in 19 different states with up to $3.6 million in cash being seized. They were also able to seize 100,000 tramadol pills, 24 kilograms of Xanax, 300 models of liquid opioids, and 100 grams of fentanyl. I'm pretty sure that would kill you if you took it all at once. The special agent in charge of the operation said that Bitcoin and the blockchain made it less difficult for individuals to hide the fact that they were transacting drug money because the nature of the blockchain is that it's distributed open ledger. It, everybody can see it and participate in it. So if you're transacting in a drug deal, not only can everybody else see it, but the government can see it too. This helped them link the client's wallets to drug transactions and resulted in the raids and prosecutions. So clearly by all normal accounts, this operation was a success, but I want to pass a question off to you all. What do you think of the government operating websites like this where they're being complicit in illegal activities in order to capture other criminals. This wouldn't be the first time that this has happened. Back in 2015, the FBI was found to have been running one of the internet's largest child porn sites in order to lure in those who were engaging and participating on the site. I think it begs the question of morality with technology. Should governments be allowed to engage in technological crimes in order to catch criminals on the internet? Do you think that because they're the government, they hold certain elevated privileges that allow them to bait individuals in without being complicit? Or do you think that upholding the law includes not allowing certain things to exist, even if it means you'll catch more perpetrators? I'd love to hear what you all think down in the comments. Again, keep it simple. Anyways, that wraps up our segment of, wait, did the government really just do that? So in more lighthearted news to recover from that governmental section, Burger King and Budweiser participated in what can only be described as the strangest conversation between two companies on Twitter that I've ever seen. They apparently found it hilarious to tweet the words, ah, at each other for nine straight tweets, apparently as some sort of callback to Budweiser's what's up commercials. <laughs> Some days you just have to wonder why Twitter even exists. <sighs> But now back into disappointing news. YouTube is apparently testing out an experiment where users' custom thumbnails won't be displayed. They claim that this is to help them learn how to better enhance the auto thumbnail function and that only 0.3% of users are affected. Some people seem to think that this is YouTube once again not giving a rip about the creators, while others seem to think that it's about them fighting clickbait and potentially creating a future where duck faces and open gaping mouths are no longer a problem or a common sight on the platform. I personally would be of the former camp thinking that this infringes on creators. A lot of creators, including ourselves, put time, effort, and thought into how we want to represent our videos to our audience. Sometimes we don't always get it right, but we pay for it in dislikes or people choosing not to watch our videos at all. However, for YouTube to randomly take that privilege away from creators on how we can best represent our videos to people on the platform, it seems like another pebble in the giant pile of things YouTube is doing that's making them lose connection with their core creators. And then in news to actually complain about, because you know, YouTube actually is a huge blessing. It's not necessarily just something to, to crap on all the time. A marketing firm by the name of Exactus has recently been compromised and leaked close to three 140 million records on individuals all across the US. This data dump doesn't appear to include sensitive information like social security numbers or credit card info, but it does 
provide things such as your phone numbers, home addresses, and personally identifiable characteristics that ad advertisers would likely use. Overall, roughly two terabytes of data was compromised, and one security company owner said that the database seems like it adds pretty much every US citizen in it. The personal data that's out there includes over 400 different variables about individuals, including like smoking status, whether you have cats or dogs, religious preferences, whether you wear plus size apparel, etc. Again, I guess thankfully, this doesn't appear to be any information that would lead to an increase in identity theft or credit card hijacking, but it does seem to be a ton of data that targeted advertisers can use to build a better profile of who you are. It's a massive breach that serves as a reminder that a lot of the things that we put on the internet, it's not safe. It's in the hands of a massive corporation that uses it in a way to make money and not something that's cultivated and protected as if it was actually private information. You combine this news story with the Facebook patent story from yesterday's hot news, and I kind of feel the need to get off of social media altogether, to be honest. And then let's move on into the titular topic for today, a few news pieces about AMD. Firstly, we have more leaks about the upcoming Threadripper 2990X 32 core CPU. A German website has apparently listed the CPU for roughly 1,500 euros or about 1,500 USD, which would be an increase in cost of roughly 50% from the previous Threadripper 1950X flagship, at launch at least. This isn't too hefty of a price increase considering the 2990X will have 100% more cores than the 1950X. The specifications the retailer lists seem to be a repost of what the current lineup has, especially with regards to the TDP and cash amount. It's possible those are the correct numbers, but we've had other leaks that indicated that the TDP will be 250 watts and they'll have double the amount of L3 cash on these HEDT chips. And adding to that, we have an appearance of the 2990X on 3 d Mark. There's no official bench Benchmark score for it, but it does seem to indicate the CPU has a base clock of 3 gigahertz and a boost of 3.8. It's possible that XFR could help it boost beyond the 4 gigahertz range, but at the same time, it could be a doctored screenshot. And then we have good indication that AMD is trying to make some headway in the game development industry. One of the strangleholds that Nvidia has had when it comes to game performance is that they've had the lion's share of game developers making games on their hardware. This has led to better performance for Nvidia, even when AMD cards clearly have more brute strength and were performing significantly worse when games were optimized for Team Green instead of for Team Red. There's indication that AMD is attempting to alleviate this by sending Ryzen and Radeon bundles out to game dev teams to hopefully incentivize them to develop more for their hardware. Currently, the makers of Dying Light, Serious Sam, and the Shadow Warrior series have posted Twitter images of a nice haul of various pro Ryzen processors from Ryzen 3 all the way up to Threadripper, as well as various Radeon GPUs, including Vegas and RX 580s. It could be that more game development companies have received this lovely goodie basket from AMD and just haven't gone public with their gratitude, but the clear benefit of this is that we should have more games that will be properly optimized for Ryzen, Vega, and hopefully more multi-threaded scenarios if AMD is actually successful with their initiative. It may not seem like much, but this could be the start of a future where we have games that can actually perform well on GPUs that are actually better than the GPU that they're losing to instead of having a Vega 64 sometimes get wrecked by a GTX 1060 because the developer only coded for the green team and then left Team Red out all in the cold. And that's gonna wrap it up for all the stories we have on Hot News today. Be sure to let me know what you thought of any of the news topics today down in the comments below. I wanna hear from all of you and don't forget that we are looking for writers and video editors. So if you're interested, please send an email to ufdhotnews at jamal.com. It would be much appreciated. I'll look through them and hopefully you can take some of the shoulder burden that's on my shoulders because Reese had to, he had to go. And while you're down in the comments, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, if you liked what we're trying to do on this channel. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our tech related content, including hot news, as well as other videos that we have for you. Anyways, I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers.